our next speaker. There she is, uh, Jane Sturck, who's going to talk about transition, steady state economy to solve clim climate change. Um, I want to thank Idea Wave. This is a great concept, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm Jane Sturck, and I'm leader of the BC Green Party, and they, I assured them it would not be a political talk, but I just need to let you know that I am speaking on behalf of my employer. And um, uh, what I'm here is to talk about, uh, to, to confront the ch or to challenge the perception that we can deal with climate change by creating regulations that will deal with our environmental problems. And I believe that the only way we're really going to deal with climate change is through a different economic model. And so I'm going to ask you to reimagine how we can create healthy families and healthy individuals and healthy communities and heal our planet by reimagining what our economy should look like. And um, I think we all know that we're in serious trouble. We've heard that from other speakers this morning. And part of that is that we have this economic structure, which is, which is based in boom and bust. We have had six recessions since 1970, the worst being in, in 2008. But we've had that up and down, that boom and bust that goes over and over again. And with it go up and down on our jobs and up and down on our communities. And we've seen that in BC. We've had resource towns that go under because of these boom and bust cycles. And that boom and bust economy, paradoxically enough, is fueled by debt. The, the BC debt is increasing by $20 billion every decade. The federal debt is at $550 billion. And at right now, BC families are carrying 150 to 160 percent of their income. We can't continue to live like that. It's insane and it's crazy and it's unsustainable. And it damages us and it creates our sense of insecurity and our sense of fear. We also are confronted with resource depletion. We all know that the easy part of oil and gas is, is over, the cheap part of oil and gas is over, and while, now we're into the really nasty stuff. But we have resource depletion in our minerals, we have de resource depletion of our soils, our, our peatlands and our, water, our wet, wetlands, so that everything that is of value to us is depleted. And the ecological problems. So the theme of my talk is climate change. So one of those ecological problems is the waste that we dump into the atmosphere that's fundamentally and profoundly cha changing our climate. We also have waste that we're dumping into our land and our water, which is poisoning us. Which leads to me to another thing, because we have this pandemic of illness. We have children with asthma rates. We have adults with cancer rates. And we have mental illness. One in five or one in four of us in our adulthood will have some sort of a mental illness. Most of it is depression related. And there is an adage that what we do to our land, we do to ourselves. And that's our illness. We have family stress. We have uh, kids watching television to five to seven hours a day. We have parents where you have to have two parent families that need those incomes in order to make ends meet. And we have uh, the, the stress of no time and no wealth. We have communi community decay. We have our infrastructure, which is falling apart in every community around British Columbia. But not only that, we are no longer involved in our community. Every community around BC is desperate for people to sit on advisory boards and they can't get applicants because we no longer volunteer, we no longer care about being involved in our community. And we have social trends, we have uh, unemployment, and we have even more important underemployment. We have people doing shitty jobs because that's the only kind of jobs that our economy is creating. And so we need to have something different. I was at a conference recently of municipal elected officials. Bob, Bill Reese was, tell, uh, was there, he's the ecological footprint guy, and he was saying, how many of you believe that we can have un, uh, continuous grow, growth on a finite planet? And nobody put their hand up. And he said, and how many of you in your communities are planning for growth? And virtually every hand in the room went up. That's the disconnect we have between what we need to do and what we can do. And so the solution is to reform our uh, economy into one that is sustainable, one that is regionally based, one that is self-sufficient. And so what would that look like? We would uh, create, produce our food and consume it locally. We would create our energy and use it locally. We would keep our money locally so that instead of investing in some far off fund, we would find a way to invest in our own community, to keep our, our money locally. 
We would have our healthcare local, we would have our social services local, we would have our education local. We would create transportation networks that would allow us to stay local and to uh, be involved in our local community. And we would recreate a sense of culture. We would revitalize our networks of interdependency because we all know that we're in this together. And we would create our sense of community and our sense of belonging. Uh, and our economies would vary from place to place. BC is a huge place and there's a diversity of resources and there's a diversity of things that we do in those places and so our economy in the north would differ from South Vancouver Island and the economy in North Vancouver Island would differ from the lower mainland. And um, we would be focused on, on development, not growth. And we would be focused on making our economy better, not bigger. And so that's the concept of a steady state economy or a sustainable economy or a green economy or a resilient healthy economy. It doesn't matter what our language is, but it matters that we can think differently and we can disengage ourselves from a belief that growth is the be all and end all. And that consumption that fuels that, that, fuels that growth our economy is fueled by 60 to 70 percent consumption. That means that you and I have to be out there buying stuff all of the time. And the stuff that we're buying now is, is designed so that it breaks down so that we can buy more stuff. And that's how we get ourselves spending 150 percent of our income. So what would it look like? Would there be any benefit to changing our economy? Well, we would have new businesses in things like energy independence. We would create renewables in wind, solar, tidal, geothermal. We are ingenious people and every part of British Columbia could have a different form of energy that we uh, create businesses and then we service the energy supply so that we have a, a sense of independence and a sense of control over our supply and our cost. We would have... Um, an ability to preserve our resources because everything that we extract would be value added. And before we extract something new, we would add, we would recycle and recycle and recycle. And at the end of the life, at the end of the last recycle, that would become a feedstock for some other process. We would have com community control over our resources so that we wouldn't have a distant provincial government that says, you have to approve this project or you have to approve that project. We would have livable, livable towns and cities where we have local decision making because we're the best people in order to make uh, the decisions about the problems we face. We would have citizen involvement. We would get back into believing that we're a crucial part of our, our uh, community and wanting to volunteer for those boards so that our municipal governments don't have to beg us to get involved. We would have a revitalization of our arts and culture. We would celebrate our poets and our writers and our artists, and they would be part of our community forever and ever and ever. And we would have more leisure and less stress. And we would have a tremendous appreciation of place. We would love the place that we're in because it is our place and we feel that we are a part and, inter and intricately connected to it. And we would see a reduction in poverty and we would see a reduction in our social problems. And what might the other benefits be? Well, we might have clean air and clean, and clean water. We have polluted our air and our water so that it becomes our disease mechanism that is expressed in our bodies. And we would clean that up. We would have ecological restoration in every part of this province. We would have healthy soils, and that would mean that we could grow our nutritious soils, our nutritious food locally, and we could celebrate our farmers. We would get to know our farmers. We would all become farmers. We would all become part of the, the food production cycle, if only because we eat good and nutritious food that is grown locally. And we would have responsible behavior, not just to ourselves, but to other species. We would appreciate that what we do to the earth, we also do to our other species with whom we share this planet. And we would also have responsible behavior to fo toward future generations. So we would think about every action that we take as a, having a possible consequence to our grandchildren's grandchildren's ability to have a healthy life in this place. And we would reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. We would start to cap that and deal with climate change and find a way to adapt and mitigate the, the problems that we're creating. 
and we would have jobs, lots of jobs. In all of these things, we would have new, highly uh, technical jobs, interesting jobs, meaningful work, and we would have training so that our young people could train for those jobs, and they could live and work in the communities in which they grow up. And finally, we would have healthy families. We would have parents who have time and who have wealth. Maybe not in the number of dollars that they make, but in the relationships they have and their ability to support their family. And we would have kids who are engaged in their communities. And we would have a reduction in our family uh, dysfunction and our family dis dissolution. And so that is my solution to climate change. It has nothing to do with creating a regulation and saying you have to meet this by a certain period of time. It is a fundamental rethink and reframing and recreation of an economy that's based in having healthy individuals, healthy families, healthy communities, and a place that we call home. Thank you.